Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pierce coming to you from Baltimore. During a speech at the Republican National Convention, House Speaker and RNC Chairperson Paul Ryan blamed the enduring poverty and declining economic security on President Obama. He also criticized what he called liberal progressive ideas for having no solutions to offer. Let's have a look. Progressives like to talk, like our president, like to talk forever about poverty in America. And if high sounding talk did any good, we'd have overcome those deep problems long ago. This explains why, under the most liberal president we have had so far, poverty in America is worse, especially for our fellow citizens who are promised better and who need it most. And we offer a better way for dealing with persistent poverty in this country. A way that shows poor Americans the world beyond liberal warehousing and check writing into the life everyone can find with opportunity and independence. The happiness of using your gifts and the dignity of having a job. And you know what? None of this will happen under Hillary Clinton. Only with Donald Trump and Mike Pence do we have a chance at a better way. Joining us now to talk about who's really responsible for the enduring poverty in this country is Bill Black. Bill is an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white collar criminologist and former financial regulator and author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Thank you. So, Bill, what did you make of uh, Paul Ryan's speech and particularly the part about enduring poverty in this country? Well, that was virtually the only uh, mention of Donald Trump's name. And, of course, there was no mention of any programs that Donald Trump was supposedly going to bring to. Uh, so it was all uh, entirely words, uh, which, as Speaker Ryan aptly said, uh, don't do anything to reduce uh, Poverty. So poverty went up dramatically because of the financial crisis. And the financial crisis uh, caused uh, unemployment to grow uh, dramatically and uh, caused many people to uh, withdraw from uh, the workforce because the wages were so low that they would actually save money staying home and uh, taking care of their own kids rather than uh, working and such. Um, it, it, poverty and unemployment would have gone up dramatically higher and would have persisted uh, for many more years if Speaker Ryan's policies had been adopted. Speaker Ryan later in the same presentation, um, so as a footnote, the idea that uh, Speaker Ryan is a serious analyst is hilarious. There is no analysis, there's no data, there are no uh, specific programs uh, either that allegedly cause problems or fix problems. It is all words. Uh, but what we do know is that the stimulus program, A, was much too small, B, the revenue sharing portion was cut out at the behest of people uh, like Speaker Ryan who follow his uh, ideology, but also by conservative Democrats called the Blue Dogs. Um, but even in its weakened form, uh, the stimulus package uh, got the United States much more promptly out of the Great Recession. And you can see the comparison uh, in Europe, which uh, it's only about six weeks ago that Europe got back to the GDP it had before uh, the crisis. Uh, a number of European nations still have youth unemployment uh, above 40 uh, percent. Uh, the IMF just came out and said that Italy will have two lost decades. So uh, Italy, Greece, Spain, all of them in the Great Recession, it's actually more severe than the Great Depression. In other words, it's only the fact that uh, Ryan's policies weren't implemented because he wanted austerity 
that poverty didn't shoot up by another 10 to 15 million uh, Americans. Poverty has been uh, reduced because employment uh, gains that we've seen, and it would have been reduced much more quickly and much more fully if uh, the full stimulus had been adopted that should have been. Now, the running mate for Donald Trump is Mike Pence. And uh, what's his track record in terms of economic policy? And what can we expect with the Trump-Ryan-Pence uh, 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 triangle? Well, Pence uh, is known as an, a very, very conservative uh, type. Uh, he uh, hates the idea of stimulus. He thinks that austerity is a wonderful uh, thing. Uh, none of the, uh, these people are, uh, have all historically been opposed to any meaningful increase in minimum wage, uh, any meaningful stimulus, even in a uh, great uh, recession. So uh, they are, um, you know, actually the only hope is Trump. Uh, the other two that you've mentioned are uh, uh, completely hopeless in terms of economics. Now, is there a permanent state of amnesia in this country? I mean, do they, the people who were roaring and clapping yesterday, do they not realize that the, the Obama administration actually inherited perhaps, you know, the greatest economic crisis um, definitely of this century uh, that you call a Great Depression? Is there amnesia? Uh, to well, that, that, there is. That's actually the perfect question because literally they do not recognize it. Literally, when we do surveys of um, core Republicans, they think the stock market, for example, uh, has declined under President Obama. It's had <laughs> the largest gains in the history of the United States. Uh, they think unemployment has increased or barely decreased, uh, which is completely contrary. Uh, they are completely wrong about interest rates. They're completely wrong about inflation. So yes, they. it isn't simply they have amnesia. They actually have this falsely created image, uh, deliberately created by people like uh, Ryan, um, that is exactly the opposite of reality. And uh, looking forward now to the Democratic Party convention coming up, um, of course, uh, you know, we would like to have seen more progressive stand in, when it comes to economic issues like that of Bernie Sanders, but that's not going to be the case. Um, uh, obviously, when we look at the, uh, the Democratic Party platform and what's going forward, uh, what's the takeaway from the RNC to the DNC? Well, uh, and the segue is Speaker Ryan's line, where he claimed that President Obama was the most liberal president in U.S. history, which is preposterous. And on precisely the point we've been discussing is a classic example of that. Um, the, President Obama has said inconsistent things about the new Democrats, but his most famous one is going in front of them and saying, I'm one of you in terms of outlook. And we know that he tried very hard to get what he called a grand bargain. And the grand bargain was to uh, start cutting Social Security uh, and to uh, have austerity. Um, and had he succeeded in getting that grand bargain, he, he tried everything on his end. It was actually the Tea Party that was so extreme that it ultimately killed the deal, which, by the way, it, the predecessor of the Tea Party, their analog under uh, President Clinton, did the same thing, or uh, Clinton would have privatized Social Security uh, years ago. So the, the Democrats in both the Clinton administration and the Obama administration eventually moved uh, very, very far to the right to, um, you know, voodoo economics and such. So the question is, can the DNC and Hillary Clinton, who, after all, it was Bill's policies that were precisely these Republican policies, can they be brought back um, to rational economics? 
uh, or if we get a recession under uh, Hillary, is she going to say the equivalent of uh, what President Obama said uh, in uh, State of the Union? He said, uh, you know, it's bad times, so uh, households have to pull in their belts, so the government has to do the same thing. Well, that's exactly the opposite. The government, if people are pulling in their belts, has to serve as the automatic stabilizer uh, that will prevent that contraction of the economy, prevent the insanity of this self-inflicted, uh, worse than Great Depression levels that we're seeing in many parts of Europe uh, and such. So um, it's you, you won't look to the platform. That won't tell you. You have to look to Hillary Clinton's economic advisors. And of course, that was one of the differences uh, uh, on Bernie Sanders. Uh, people like me were uh, economic advisors by Bernie Sanders. The chance uh, that Hillary Clinton will pick uh, any of us uh, to even have as a rival source, you know, a, a heterodox source of uh, views, I think is close to nil. But, uh, you know, that would be a good signal if she at least expanded her economic team uh, to get people that got it right as opposed to the uh, string of uh, disasters uh, that have been uh, major economic advisors for people like Bill Clinton and all too often President Obama. All right, Bill, I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.